Hey, are you looking for something to play on your PS5 or PS4 in 2022? Well, we've got you covered with a bunch of games here. Also, uh, there are even more games out there that we couldn't even fit on this list. So we're looking forward to hearing your own personal lists in the comments. Be sure to leave one. But anyway, uh, let's get started off here with number 20. The day before. This looks like The Last of Us meets The Division. It's an open world survival MMO where you're, you guessed it, fighting to survive. It has your typical survival stuff like crafting and looting resources wherever you go while fighting off other survivors and zombies. Uh, we've gotten a good amount of gameplay from this and it's shaping up to be everything we've ever wanted from this type of game, some sort of zombie survival MMO. Like this is what a lot of us wanted from DayZ in a really cool city area with great atmosphere. Uh, we're really hoping it's able to live up to the expectation that it's setting. Now, next over at number 19, Gotham Knights should be releasing this year after many delays, and this is a new take on the Bat Family in a cooperative beat-em-up Arkham-style game. Technically, this does not take place in the Arkham timeline. It's a different thing. This is by Warner Brothers Montreal, the folks behind the underrated Batman Arkham Origins, and this open-world Gotham game pits you as the Bat Family members dealing with the fact that Batman and Commissioner Gordon are dead, and they have to face off against a bunch of classic Gotham villains as well as the Court of Owls. A lot a lot of people thought this was just going to be like a straight up live service game, but apparently you can play it completely on your own and just enjoy a story, which makes us very happy. And you can't help but really love that Arkham beat em up style combat. It's here again, but with more cooperative elements and way more abilities specific to each very unique character. And the story, if it's just a good Batman, Bat Family story, it could be awesome. We're keeping our eye on this one because we just love Batman and comic books, uh, so keep your eyes peeled. Now next over at number 18, let's talk Evil West. Have you ever wanted to be a cool Western version of Van Helsing? Well, like, Evil West will let you seemingly actually live that out. You play as a vampire hunting cowboy man as you make your way through the vampire hordes that are terrorizing this fictional West. Uh, combat here looks really intense and you'll have a bunch of different vampire hunting tools and weapons at your disposal. It seems like the combat can get pretty intense and gory and it has some real gross looking enemies. And uh, even better than that, you can also play with a friend. We're just big fans of anything vampire related here at Game Ranks and we're also fans of games that kind of look and give off the vibe and kind of bring back the memories of those like mid 2000s action games that were really unique and weird. More of this type of stuff, please sign us up. Now, next over at number 17, we have King of Fighters 15. Uh, what more is there to be said about a game on its 15th entry? The people behind the King of Fighters games really absolutely know what they're doing. Uh, this time around, it's launching with 39 fighters that'll be available at launch. Uh, there's the 3v3 battle system making its return uh, with a shatter strike mechanic that should hopefully make things a little bit interesting for veteran players. And the campaign is actually getting hyped up quite a bit this time around. And we'll apparently end with an explosive climax. Now, it's been like six years since the release of the last entry in the series, and this one seems like it's shaping up to be the best one yet. I mean, what more could you want? They've had 15 games. I think they've figured it out by now. Next over at number 16, we have Showa, American Story. Uh, this is a wild and weird, seemingly experimental game that we think we're gonna be talking about a bit more on the channel. Uh, this takes place in a weird alternate history world in like a hyper sci-fi 80s where Japan occupies the United States and you're just this badass chick kicking ass with melee combat and guns. It's an action RPG that clearly references a lot of B-movies from all different cultures. It's seemingly open world and has a bunch of human characters characters and monster characters and it just looks chaotic and really awesome like just looking at the gameplay like i don't even really know what to say it seems over the top we love brawlers like this but we also just love chaotic monster shooters and of course if it's got open world rpg elements that could be great at first you might write it as corny and over the top but it seems like that's the point here it's really trying to go for something it seems like the work on this one is going strong and we're really hoping we see it in 2022. Next over at number 15, we have Sifu. What more can we say about this game that we haven't already said? This challenging game is all set around you really setting out on a quest for revenge, punching your way through five intense, difficult, grindy levels, learning the basics, learning the ins and outs, and how to flawlessly finish a level and complete the boss without dying too much because every time you die, you get older and older. And if you get too old, it's game over. There's a lot more to it, a lot more nuance that we don't have time to cover. Be sure to check out our Before You Buy review video or any other review out there, but we think it's one of the best games of the year so far. We know it's early, it's only February, but uh, still uh, definitely check this one out if you haven't already. 
Now, next over at number 14, we have the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake, which interestingly enough is going to be exclusive to PlayStation consoles and PC. Star Wars and the company that owns it are very different than the last time we had Knights of the Old Republic. So really the jury's still out on this one. It's up in the air. This is a complete remake. Apparently it might expand on some elements. It might change some things. We really don't know too much. We're hoping that we get to see it in 2022. Apparently this has been in the works for a bit, but we'll have to just wait and see. Next over at number 13, we have Steel Rising. This is from Spiders, the developers behind Bound by Flame, Mars Warlogs, uh, the Technomancer, uh, but also the pretty awesome Greedfall. Steel Rising just looks like an awesome, sick-ass action combat game set in a really unique setting. It's Paris 1789, but things are a little bit different. Uh, you actually play as kind of like a clockwork mannequin called Aegis, and it just looks absolutely like a blast. You have challenging, fast-paced, intense combat, uh, but you have this unique weird alternate history aesthetic with Paris and the mood and atmosphere is dark and creepy. The enemy types and monsters look sick and we're just really hoping this one shapes up to be awesome. Greedfall was really unique. Spiders has worked on a bunch of games that we weren't really fans of but they've worked their way up to something awesome and we're hoping Steel Rising is really the pinnacle of their work. Next over at number 12, we have Stray. This is the cat game you've seen probably revealed at one of the PlayStation events. Apparently this is going to be a semi-open-ended adventure uh, where you play as a cat who picks up some abilities along the way and it just seems charming and clever and thrilling. I know, I never thought I would say a, th a cat game looks thrilling, but like just look at the trailer, look at the gameplays we've had so far. We need more creative outside the box games like this, so we're always gonna celebrate stuff like this and we hope this is awesome. Stray is slated for PlayStation consoles in 2022. Now, next over at number 11, we have Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. This is the Borderlands spinoff that takes Tiny Tina's wild and crazy imagination and makes it a full game. It's a send up on D&D &D and all medieval style stuff. And it seems like a refreshing spin on Borderlands. It's a little bit more fantasy oriented with you making your own character. You're fighting way more over the top fantastical enemies and creatures with a different theme, less sci-fi, more crazy fantasy, and more of that Borderlands signature gameplay and humor. This one's releasing March 25th, 2022. Next over at number 10, we have Hogwarts Legacy. Now this game has been delayed quite a bit. It's been in the works for a long time. Remember those leaks back in the day? Man, it's felt like a long time since then. Uh, but Hogwarts Legacy, according to reports most recently, is going to come out this year. There were conflicting reports earlier where we wouldn't see it, but we think 2022 is finally gonna be the year. This open-ended, make your own Hogwarts student and go on your own adventure type thing seems pretty awesome. It's set much earlier in the history of Hogwarts as an institution, and we're excited to see something different and new in the world of Harry Potter, because frankly, those Fantastic Beasts movies aren't really doing it for us. Fingers crossed this one is good. Now, next over at number nine, we have Little Devil Inside. This was announced two years ago, in June 2020, and it looks like it'll finally be coming out this year. Everything about this game has just really piqued our interest, from its really kind of cutesy but really intriguing art style, uh, to the little comedic bits we've gotten in all of the trailers, and even the Monster Hunter-esque gameplay. Yes, I, every time we see this game, it looks more and more interesting. Uh, you're gonna be traveling around through all different types of environments, hunting down monsters, which uh, you can do with a friend via co-op. So get ready to do some cool monster hunting in this weird indie artsy style. And uh, possibly get your ass kicked. It actually looks pretty challenging. Now, next over at number eight, we have Atomic Heart. What more can we say about this game? Uh, this weird alternate history uh, Soviet open-ended adventure takes a lot of cues from Bioshock and System Shock with a bunch of makeshift weaponry and weird freaks and sci-fi monsters to fight off and robots and man, everything about this game just oozes style and creativity and we love seeing stuff like this. We hope this game is as awesome as it has seemed since the beginning, which we've been following it from pretty much day one. We don't have an exact date, but they have just now confirmed that this is releasing in 20. 2022, seemingly towards the end of the year in the fall. Next over at number seven, we have Saints Row. They are rebooting Saints Row. I don't think they could have taken it any further or any crazier than they already have. So they're bringing it a little bit back down to earth, but still with a chaotic group of characters and action and explosions and weirdness, all in a new kind of Southwestern setting and new city. You're gonna be able to create your own character and go on weird hijinks. And the gameplay we've seen so far does seem to remind me very much of Saints Row two and three from an action gameplay perspective, but the jury's still out. We need to see more of this game. Thankfully though, we'll get to see it this summer. It's slated for August 23rd, 2022. 
Next over at number six, we have A Plague Tale Requiem. Uh, this is the sequel to one of our favorite games the year it released, A Plague Tale Innocence. Uh, once again, you are taking the helm of the two main characters. You're gonna be thrust in a new, a little bit more exotic location with way more abilities and way more combat capabilities, thanks to Amitia seemingly becoming a badass over the course of the last game. And from the trailers we've seen so far, it seems like once again, we're getting absolutely downright gorgeous graphics, cool and really horrific and creepy gross scenarios, uh, new characters, returning characters, and we can't wait, man. As of right now, it's slated for 2022. And next at number five, we have Ghostwire Tokyo, the newest game from Tango Gameworks. Uh, Tokyo's population in this game just disappeared, vanished, and now there are a bunch of spooky, scary, supernatural monsters roaming around. Honestly, this isn't something that we were very much into. It sounded kind of boring until the last bit of gameplay we saw. The newest stuff from this game makes it look absolutely awesome. The combat looks really interesting and different for a first person game. It also kind of looks like the Doctor Strange FPS that we didn't know we wanted, uh, this might actually be the last PS5 exclusive Bethesda game since Microsoft acquired Bethesda, and hopefully it's a good one. Ghostwire Tokyo is releasing March 25th, 2022. Next over at number four, we have Elden Ring. What more can we say about this one? It's from software's latest and greatest. They're the folks behind Bloodborne, Sekiro, and of course, Dark Souls and Demon Souls. This time around, they're taking that beloved challenging formula and placing it in an open world setting, but of course, with their own creative spin on things. We've got crazy monster designs, over the top environments, and a story framework established by George R.R. Martin, the Game of Thrones guy himself. Of course, Miyazaki and the rest of the crew really took that and ran with it here, but it, it seems like it's shaping up to be a wild game. And after long anticipation, we'll finally be playing it in February, and we really hope it lives up to the hype. Now, next over at number three, we have Gran Turismo 7. The developers behind these games, Polyphony Digital, take a long time crafting these games, and it always really shows. Their attention to detail is absolutely insane. If you're looking for a hardcore, realistic, simulation-style racing game, Gran Turismo 7 might be your dream come true. The game is expanded with more cars than ever, tons of tweaking, lots of options, lots of menus to dig through because these games are kind of famous for it, and pretty much some of the best and most gorgeous racing game graphics we've ever seen. And it's finally releasing on both PlayStation consoles March 4th, 2022. Now down to number two, Horizon Forbidden West. This is Aloy's next adventure, picking up directly after Horizon Zero Dawn. This time around, the worlds are bigger, you have more abilities, more items, more traps, more gadgets at your disposal in a more dangerous world. Uh, you also have way more capability for getting around, including climbing, grappling, hooking, and paragliding. And this game is shaping up to be pretty awesome. Reviews have dropped, it seems like people are really digging it. As of the time of making this video, the general gaming audience hasn't gotten their hands on it yet, but it seems like it's shaping up to be pretty great. Now down to number one, we have the big one. We're hoping it releases this year. It's God of War Ragnarok. This is the next leg in Kratos and Atreus' journey. We loved God of War 2018. It was an incredible game and we thought it was a really cool new spin on the classic God of War stuff uh, that definitely plays kind of different but doesn't lose its identity. It still makes sense and it still feels right. And we're hoping Ragnarok can really continue that trend because it does seem like they're going bigger and badder here more moves, more enemies, a bigger world, more variety. We just hope that it really keeps its hooks in that delicious story. It's simple, it's compelling, it's good, and we can't wait to see where it goes. That's that's really the long and short of it. Those are a bunch of PS4 and PS5 games, but we got a couple of bonus ones we wanna shout out as well. We have Lies of P, uh, which we think is releasing in late 2022 or 2023. Sniper Elite 5, Forspoken, LX2, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin, Dying Light 2, Stay Human is awesome, Marvel's Midnight Suns, Sonic Finally Goes Open World with Sonic Frontiers, Test Drive Unlimited, Solar Crown, Lego Star Wars, Skywalker Saga, and Ali Ali World. Those are a bunch of games that we think are awesome or at least are worth looking forward to in 2022. Fingers crossed that all these games are great and that none of them get delayed. That's wishful thinking, of course, but this is a roundup. And of course, we wanna hear your personal list, like we said, down in the comments. If you got your own top five, top 10 of games you're looking forward to playing on your Sony console, let us know. If you enjoyed this video though, and maybe you learned about a new game, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.